Hey TSC fans, meteorologist Trey Greenwood back with another weekly Sunday video. Last week, not much to talk about in the weather department for Texas, and that looks to continue for this week. We don't have any severe weather on the horizon, and winter weather looks to remain at bay, although it will be a little bit chilly today and tomorrow before we warm up into the upcoming week. As you can see here in the next week of severe weather outlooks from the Storm Prediction Center, no areas of interest outlined in Texas, maybe an outside chance of an isolated thunderstorm or two today across far south Texas. But other than that, looks to be a very quiet week in the severe weather department. Again, looks to be chilly for the next couple of days today and tomorrow before we warm up into next week. A low end chance of a few showers come Tuesday night into Wednesday. We'll talk about why here in just a second before things quiet down for the remainder of the week. We do have another cold frontal passage that is expected later in the work week, but not expected to be nearly as cold as, as it is with the, the cold frontal passage that occurred yesterday into today. So let's break down the meteorology behind the week ahead here in Texas weather, starting with what the atmosphere looks like right now. This is the 500 millibar map as it looks right now. So about 18,000 feet off the atmosphere. And again, this is where we look for our troughs and ridges. The variations in these black contours here, the downward kinks in the black contours, those are troughs like you see here in the eastern U.S. And the upward kinks in these, high, these black contours are your ridges associated with high pressure, troughs associated with low pressure. Generally with severe weather, we want to see a trough moving in. Ahead of that trough is where the rising motion is maximized to support storm development in a given environment. We do have a pretty robust trough out here across eastern Canada into the eastern U.S. This guy right here, very intense trough, strong winds have rounded the base of that trough over 100, 110 knots or so at about 18,000 feet above the ground. That's some pretty strong winds up there at that level. So this is a pretty intense trough and what happens in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere, like at 500 millibars, dictates what happens in the lower levels. So as we've seen this trough start to amplify across the eastern U.S., what has happened in its wake is a strong surge of cold air all the way down into the far southern reaches of the U.S., including here in Texas. Here's a look at the current surface observations across the southern plains, including Texas. And as you can see, the wind barbs here all indicate that the winds at the surface are out of the north. And again, just how to read these wind barbs, take, take for example this one. We go through the little flags on the end of the staff there toward the center of the station to give us the wind direction. So at that station there, that would be a northeasterly wind. The top number here is your surface temperature. The bottom number is your surface dew point. So again, all of those winds across the southern plains out of the north behind a strong cold front that pushed through last night and has now pushed all the way into the Gulf. And behind this cold front is a lot of cold air. You see temperatures across the northern half of the state in the 20s and 30s. So very cold air brought in on this what we call northerly flow, winds from north to south. Of course, the, the cold air comes from the north. So these winds are blowing all of that colder air down into Texas and this cold front was quite intense so the temperature gradient across the front is pretty intense as well meaning it's a fast moving front and really it's already engulfed all of the state temperatures down here in the Gulf and far far south Texas in the 70s with 20s and 30s off to the north so a pretty distinct change in temperature 40 to 50 degrees in not a lot of distance here just across the state of Texas so very strong cold air plunge here for today and tomorrow. We're going to start warming up a little bit tomorrow. Today is going to be the chilliest day of the next week by far. And Monday morning low temperatures are expected to be some of the coldest we've seen this fall. We actually have some cold weather advisories in place from the National Weather Service. In the light blue you see here, this is a freeze watch that is in effect for southeast Texas, including College Station and the Houston Metroplex into western Louisiana. Again, for those temperatures that are expected to go sub-freezing tomorrow morning. And actually, we've just had a few counties added to a freeze warning, so a little bit higher chance of a freeze in these three counties here. That is going to be Fayette, DeWitt, and Lavaca counties about halfway between San Antonio and Houston, again, in a freeze warning for tomorrow morning for those sub-freezing temperatures that are expected. Would not be surprised to see more of these cold weather advisories pop up across the state of Texas as we go through the day today, but this is what we're dealing with right now. 
So keep those cold weather precautions in mind in the next couple of days. But let's go ahead and take a look at what the pattern is expected to do over the next week across the U.S., particularly in terms of Texas weather. This is the morning run of the GFS model, our medium range weather model. And we'll start here by looking at the progression of the 500 millibar map. Again, here is that big old trough across the eastern U.S. and eastern Canada. And in its wake, we've seen a pretty stout ridge of high pressure that has developed across the western half of the U.S. You see those upward kinks in the black lines there. That indicates a pretty stout ridge that is in place. And as you can see, Texas is right on the eastern periphery of that ridge. So weather is expected to be pretty calm for the next couple of days. Again, cold because of that cold air plunge in the wake of this trough that has moved into the eastern U.S. But it is going to be on the quieter side as far as rain chances or severe weather goes. And that's going to last for the next couple of days. But notice here, back off to the west, we have a little bit of a disturbance, a little bit of a trough making its way underneath this expansive ridge. And it's going to slowly meander its way off to the east toward the southern plains going into the next few days. Here we are on Monday evening, again quiet, but on Tuesday we start to see a little bit of a glancing influence from this trough uh, start to move into the southern plains. You, you can see we're kind of in the exit region of this trough now. A little bit of stronger flow, these green shaded areas indicate a little bit stronger flow aloft moving, making its way across Texas. And this could be just enough to support some isolated uh, showers, maybe a chance at a thunderstorm or two, especially across eastern, the eastern half of the state. It's all going to depend on how much moisture we, we see accompanying this system. So let's take a look at the dew points here, and I'm going to zoom into our southern plains sector for us. So the blues and purples, those are your 60s and 70s dew points. And you see with the cold frontal passage uh, last night into today, that moisture is going to get swept out well into the, to the Gulf. So we're not going to have any uh, chances for thunderstorms over the next couple of days. But you see, as we go into Tuesday, we get the winds that are going to shift at the surface from northerly, as we saw today, to more of a southerly direction to start pulling that moisture back northward ahead of this system. And that's going to allow, number one, temperatures to warm. We're going to see a warm up, a warming trend, a pretty significant warming trend starting on Tuesday after a couple cold days today and tomorrow. But you see some of that moisture making its way back into parts of South Texas. So that could be just enough to allow for uh, some, some showers and maybe an isolated thunderstorm or two across South and Southeast Texas, maybe as far getting into East Texas, if we can get instability up into this area of East Texas. We could see an outside chance at some showers and a thunderstorm or two from Tuesday night into Wednesday as this weak upper level disturbance moves in, coupled with this low level moisture. That could be enough to initiate a couple of some showers and maybe a storm or two Tuesday night into Wednesday. We'll take a look at the environment here across South Texas on Wednesday morning to see if thunderstorms may be supported. So again, this is our... Um, sounding this is what a weather balloon would look like weather balloon would look like if it were to be released at this location and this location is going to be in southeast texas maybe just near the corpus christi area there so on the left here is our skew t diagram this is our thermodynamic diagram just as a refresher the red line is our temperature profile as the hypothetical balloon goes up into the atmosphere the green line is our dew point in the atmosphere so our moisture content and this blue line is, is if a hypothetical box of air were to be released in this environment, what would it experience? And if this blue dashed line is to the right of the red temperature profile, we have instability in the environment. You can see here that this particular model run is showing a little bit of instability in the environment Tuesday night into Wednesday morning to perhaps support a thunderstorm or two across south and southeast Texas at that time. So again, severe weather is not expected. This is not a strong disturbance at all. And the winds aloft are not really supportive of severe weather. And we just don't have a ton of instability to, to support severe weather at all. You don't need a ton, but this is, but rest assured, this is not going to be a setup that supports uh, severe weather. But we could see enough instability develop to where we get uh, a chance for thunderstorms going into Tuesday night and Wednesday. So um, that is going to be the main thing to watch for that time frame. Uh, how much moisture do we get inland? How far north does that moisture extend? The farther north it goes, the better chances for storms would, um, the farther north, the better chances for storms would go. 
up into East Texas, but eastern half of the state definitely need to keep an eye out for some showers and maybe a storm or two Tuesday night into Wednesday as this weak upper level disturbance moves in. And then after that, we're going to quiet things down once again. So we'll go back to our 500 millibar pattern here. So you see that trough, weak trough moving into the southern U.S. by the Tuesday, Wednesday time frame. And then we see that ridge continue to get suppressed and some, some stronger sort of troughing, not really more amplified troughing, but some stronger winds start to move into the middle portion of the country, suppress that ridge of high pressure. But it's not going to be enough to support severe weather of any kind. Now we do see another trough behind this early week trough start to develop by the about the Thursday time frame or so across the central U.S. into the Great Lakes region. This is going to allow for another surface cyclone to develop. This is what caused the cold front that has swept through Texas today and is causing the cold air plunge into the southern reaches of the country. The same thing is going to happen this week. We're going to see a, uh, this trough develop, a surface cyclone, a surface low is going to develop and send another cold front our way Thursday into Friday. But again, the temperature gradient with this front is not going to be nearly as intense as it is with the front that passed through last night into today. And so we're not going to see a significant cool down with this upcoming cold front Thursday into the weekend. Uh, mainly just uh, dropping temperatures a few degrees at most, maybe from the, the mid to upper 70s across North Texas for the Tuesday, Wednesday time frame into the upper 60s to low 70s for the Thursday, Friday time frame. So not a big difference at all. We can see with our surface temperatures here, I'll zoom back in, so I'll go back to maybe Wednesday. We see those temperatures getting up into the 70s, those red and orange colors across much of the state for Wednesday. And then we go into Thursday as this cold front passes through. Here is the surface pressure lines. We want to see those trough, those kind of trough signatures there, the downward kinks in the, the lines there. That indicates a cold front moving through, but you can see temperatures on the warm side of the front in the mid to upper 60s. Thursday morning, this is at about... Um, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time Thursday morning and uh, upper 50s to low 60s on the cold side of the front. So not a very significant difference across the front at all. And that should allow temperatures to still get fairly warm for Thursday, maybe upper 60s for the northern portions of the state closer to the Red River, maybe some 50s for the Panhandle closer to that colder air source, but still getting temperatures up into the 70s and 80s down across South Texas for Thursday. And then we get a little bit of that cold air to linger on Friday with temperatures in the 60s across much of the state, uh, 60s and low 70s across much of the state on Friday. Uh, but we are expecting some nice weather for the weekend as well. So uh, just a little bit of that blip we have to get through for maybe some showers and storms Tuesday night into Wednesday. Then we warm up nicely uh, into the rest of the week and we should have a few beautiful days going for the end of the work week into the weekend. Here is our long-range forecast from the Climate Prediction Center. This is our temperature outlook. This has been expected for some time now. The background pattern supports above-average temperatures for the really the southern sort of three-quarters of the country, well above average temperatures, uh, at least higher probabilities for above normal temperatures expected for much of Texas across that period. And the precipitation forecast over that period expects below-average precipitation for the southern U.S., so not really all that surprising that we're seeing this kind of pattern set up in our model data. And it's going to be a, a nice uh, quiet week ahead after we get through these next couple days of cold weather and then maybe a few showers and storms Tuesday night into Wednesday. After that, looks like some beautiful weather for the remainder of the week. So again, another quiet week ahead after last week's quiet week as well. Uh, it's been a very quiet secondary storm season. Haven't really seen a lot of severe weather events, um, uh, you know, as we've seen the last few years in the fall and winter. That has not been the case this year, thankfully. Um, and um, this looks to be uh, another uh, continuation of the stretch of, of pretty quiet weather across, especially uh, the southern U.S., including Texas. So uh, stay warm today and tomorrow. Uh, and then uh, for the rest of the week, pretty quiet weather uh, here for Texas. So thank you all for watching. Uh, keep it here for Texas Storm Chasers for updates on anything that changes over the next week or so. And we'll be back next weekend with another meteorology breakdown for the week ahead. Uh, that will be the Christmas week uh, coming uh, in a week's time on Sunday. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.